listeners and subscribers. Hope all is well. So today, I don't think we're going to cover anything specific. Really just going to lay out a few things and sort of tease a few topics. Uh, because really, I, I noticed that lately, and I mean, it's always been that way, but it's just more permeating in, into you know general life, even when you try to avoid this stuff. Uh, politics is becoming, you know, let's use the word, toxic, okay, uh, to levels where things are becoming very divisive, all right? And if you say a trigger word for, you know, either side, you know, like a buzzword, all of a sudden they've got a radar on you and, you know, they're watching everything you say. And if you trip up, uh, let's just say this, don't you trip up, okay? And whether it's left or right, uh, sometimes I just don't get it. Uh, I know, I, I understand that Trump said a lot of things, a lot of the right things that got the patriots and conservatives on board and even some of the people in the alternative community, okay? But it's it's not like he hasn't been showing his true uh, new world order colors, okay? Because he's talked about taking our guns, and that was right in front of Nancy Pelosi, right? Take the guns first and, and then do due process, okay? He, he's gone after the bump stocks, uh, which if, if Obama was doing this and he, he's, he's done similar gun control, you know, people would be like, what's going on, right? He wants you to shoot up that oh-so-good cocktail. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're busting down doors now and jail time potentially and $1,000 fines. Uh, and, and he's kicked the ball in the Kennedy stuff, right? So in my eyes, this guy does little to no favors for those who are trying to push the envelope uh, against some of the agendas that continue here, all right? In a lot of ways, I don't think you get to the upper echelons uh, without having capitulated to the power pyramid players in some way. I think that, I think that's one of the hallmarks of these politicians. It's like, well, how do you know when a politician's lying to you, you know, when he's mouth moving type thing? I know it's cynical, but... In, in some ways, you, you got to get there. But to think that a president or a Congress or, you know, pick your poison is somehow going to fix the inherent problems we have here, um, you might be more short-sighted, uh, more short-sighted than you realize. You know, on those levels, this stuff transcends uh, party politics and uh, allegiance to, you know, the donkey or the elephant. I think that, you know, on those levels, uh, their oaths are somewhere else, okay? Uh, and I, it's up to the people, it's up to us to engage beyond the squabbles that they want us delving in. Because people get so caught up, you know, trying to stick it to the other side or, you know, whatever it is, that they'll endorse measures even to the detriment of America and, and even to themselves, okay? I think if we think hard about it, we can find examples of that. And I'm telling you, the, the powers that be, they just, they must be tickled pink, you know? And I've said it before, you know, I'm conservative, and it's more in the sense that if you were to pencil down my values, you know, I've, I've got more than land. Uh, on the right than I do on the left. Uh, but I don't advocate a particular value simply because of my leaning. You know, that's what's most important. Oh, you know, I'm I'm in this party and, you know, this is my party policy, so I'm going to put it out there even though it's, you know, not so good. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. If people are doing that, and I think more people are, uh, we we sort of lose track of what's what's good for again what's good for America not just good for the party. Uh, see, I don't think voting is useless. I I, I think that uh, we can all fall victim to sort of the media mantra, and if we go along with their spin, I, I think we're going to go the wrong way. Okay, um, but when they do that, it's almost always a strike against us. You know, with with whatever they're trying to promote, however they're trying to spin a narrative. And then it's, it's, I think it's the people that end up getting the short side of the stick uh, more often than not. And you would think that if this was all you know, accidental, that uh, the system puts so much time, energy, money, effort to get us on board with certain policies. Uh, there's something there, okay? And, and that's why they'll let us argue, right, about, what is it, gender-neutral bathrooms? Uh, but we don't see any intellectual discourse outside of the subjects uh, they seem to want us jockeying over. Okay, they, they have these things that they seem to want us to, to argue over, and that's a little, uh, they'll let us argue over it. But, you know, when we go to other areas, it's not so much, right? Because if there's something they don't want us to talk about, they'll demonize the subject, and they'll put, you know, disinformation out. Uh, they just won't put it on the air. Maybe they'll do that. Uh, we're, we're talking censorship. We're talking about curtailing information. I mean, there's still people, you know, be bopping around out there that don't even know a third building collapsed on 9-11. And it's like, come on, man, 9-11, that was a conspiracy. We're talking about separate hijackers, separate planes. I mean, and you don't think that transcends, you know, the left-right paradigm there, or, or party politics, at least. Uh, I'm telling you, there's something there. It's like, how many times are we going to fall for this stuff, right? We know the government has plans for, for its continuity, given, you know, fill-in-the-blank scenario. I've talked about it before. Uh, and, and Rex 84 isn't the only scenario. But you don't think 
if, if, if something were to happen, you know, that Trump and Pelosi would be sitting underground somewhere in some bunker, uh, you know, and the rest of us would be, you know, left to sort it out for ourselves, you know, and be in some kind of disarray. All right. We'll actually be a lot better off without them. But unfortunately, that they're not just going to disappear and, and without, you know, some type of uh, disarray for the people. All right. And again, we'll probably just end up pointing fingers at each other instead of trying to lift ourselves out of the situation. You know, I hope I'm wrong. But, you know, with with this is the hottest issue this week and, you know, this is the hottest issue that week. Uh, too many people get caught up in expending energy trying to negate what comes out of the other side, you know, rather than trying to shore up the areas we really need. And I think, uh, what was it, a good example of that, uh, was it Alyssa Milano, the the sex strike thing, okay? It's like, why fight that? Because for the right, it, it seems like a win, right? Less promiscuity, less abortions, less procreation of the lefties, right? So why waste so much energy clamoring over what's spewed from the punditry, okay? You know, it's almost like when they say jump, it's like how high, right? When they say chew on this, you know, we happily eat it. It, it, it's insane. And for those of you out there, you know, we know we aren't you know, truly wrestling against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities and powers, you know, the, the archons, those who sort of rule the rulers, what I was hinting at earlier. Uh, that's really what we're talking about, because we know, or <laughs> at least we should know, that some of these politicians, and, and they believe some pretty, pretty far out there stuff, okay? Celebrities too, you know? And y if you think this channel's out there, just <laughs> what some of these influencers subscribe to, uh, this, that's a completely other issue issue <laughs> i'm telling you this should really stir up some consternation among the people about all the, the the fallacious nature okay of the people who are in power and they're making decisions over our lives all right and if we really wanted to propose some solutions and you know i've, I've proposed some before we've gotta uh have term limits in congress okay we can't have those lifers there okay limit the, the lobbyists that congress can have congressmen and women can have okay maybe have four or five lobbyists for the people all right when when a bill is passed have a parallel bill that allows the minority there to not be impacted by it okay though those who didn't vote for it in a situation i've used but the example you know the uh, california i think it was proposition 10 gas tax okay uh how about the people who didn't vote for that or voted no against it, at least those people who voted no against it? OK, now they don't pay the gas tax. All right. All the people who didn't vote and all the people who voted for it. Now they're getting taxed. OK, so that way uh, there's some representation of the people for the minority. All right. Because we're supposed to have that, you know, Democratic Republic thing. Maybe we could even, you know, fold the Fed into the the into our United States you know, monetary system. The Federal Reserve doing us a lot of damage, right? And even Ben Bernanke it took, you know, responsibility for the uh, collapse that happened back in, you know, 1929 and then ultimately what happened in the 30s. Yeah, we did it. We're sorry. We won't happen again. Uh, type thing, chairman of the Federal Reserve, all right? It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Those folks out there uh, taking advantage of our money, giving taxes back to the people, okay? Quit robbing, quit robbing folks. There's a lot of solutions within the paradigm we are currently in that, that can sort of, I think, go go the distance for the, for the people. But yeah, there's, there's not hardly any momentum behind that when we're talking about, you know, these, these clowns that are in power who uh, decide what we decide what we do. But anyway, I think I'm going to leave it here. California Carter signing off.